Welcome, everyone, to the SFL Podcast. As you can tell, I am not Jack. This is Max Paul, better known as Mighty RX, um, owner of the Alaska Storm. And I'm joined by Ramos Lynn, owner of their Season 9 champion, Mexico City Aztecs. Ramos, how are you doing tonight, man? I'm feeling pretty good. I was uh, under the weather like three hours ago, but I was like, nah, I have the podcast. This is leading to the championship game. This is important. So obviously I cannot miss such a thing like this. And, you know, happy to be here uh, for the last week of the season. You know, the, obviously the Pro Bowl is like extra. So last week of the season, championship game, uh, see if the undefeated Tallahassee Pride can win it all or if the championship game stays here in the podcast. And so just like Ray Bentley dominating defenders in season nine, you dominated the weather. To be, so now the weather is under you. I like it. I like it. So uh, without further ado, um, we're going to give you all a brief breakdown, brief, uh, a breakdown of the championship matchup. Um, I'm going to take Tallahassee and explain their road to here. Well, first of all, they had an unblemished regular season. They finished season 12 and 0. Um, coming into the playoffs, they faced uh, the survivor of the wild card the Indianapolis Red Devils, and um, Tallahassee survived them as well. With The Red Devils fought back from that big deficit, was able to push the game into overtime, and um, only to succumb to Tallahassee after a block punt. Uh, Tallahassee was able to eke him out there. Tallahassee followed that up with uh, a matchup with the Houston Hyenas and uh, DR Sim. It was a nip-tuck affair early on in the ball game, but... The second half came around, and it looked like Houston's offense did not get out of the locker room, and uh, Tallahassee was able to kind of uh, assert their will at that point and win that one 37-20. to 20. Um, And that's how they got to this championship game that we're going to have Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, on the front page of Twitch. Ramos, what you got? Yeah, as far as the Alaska Storm, obviously they had a very, very good season. Obviously they were second overall with a 10-2 and two record. Uh, in the regular season, they lost a couple of, you know, games where, you know, against teams like the San Antonio uh, Vaqueros, who, uh, sorry, the, the San Francisco Sarks, who, you know, really, Alaska didn't look bad at all. Eh? They have not looked bad all season. Uh, Alex Dominguez, still Alex Dominguez. Uh, Ron Cochran has been unbelievable this year. Yasin Clifton has been really, really good and a mismatch for a lot of teams. You have Robert Merrill, you have Optimus Klein. Even Stan Nordellas, he's really, really good as a non-contracted running back. Their their defense, led by you, Mighty, is always on top of it. They always game plan accordingly, and they had a very good, outstanding regular season. Then in the playoffs, they beat us a 38 to 33. After you know we first took lead with a pick six, and then Alaska just settled down, scored a lot of unanswered points. They were 28 and, uh, to 10 leading. Then we tried to make a comeback. Didn't work. Um, they got the playoff win there. And then the Sioux Falls Paros game where they really, even though the game was not like a super blowout, they really looked on top of it the whole game. It never looked like Alaska was not in control of this ball game. So you have two very experienced, not only teams here in the SFL, but two very experienced owners. Frank and Mighty go back 10 years here in all pro football, uh, you know, in the video game. Uh, so they know their stuff, obviously. Tallahassee, for the first time, is here in the championship game. They lost a few seasons back in the Western, uh, well, it was like the Teal Conference, I think, uh, back like five seasons ago. They, they were just one game away from the championship game, and now Alaska as well, getting here. The two best teams all season. They deserve to be here. And just looking forward for a masterful game between these two squads. Well, speaking of this epic matchup, yeah, man. Frank and I go back since the PS3 days of all pro with that uh, football NFL simulation one-on-one league back in 2007. So, yes, we like... Frank's, I believe Frank is one of the only people whose phone number I had before I joined the SFL. So, yeah, we go back a long ways. So, pretty boy, Frank, I'm coming for you. Um, having said all that, uh, let's get into this matchup. This is the first ever time that the Alaska Storm faced the Tallahassee Pride. Uh, Alaska's coming into this game with a number two offense 
having to face Tallahassee's number two defense in that and that you know uh, full you know unit of mastodons that they call a defensive line. Um, Tallahassee brings in the number one offense in all the land, uh, having to face Alaska's number three defense. Um, look a little deeper behind the numbers. Alaska has a number two passing offense, um, but they also have the, the worst rushing offense in all of the SFL. But on the flip side, on defense, they have the number two run defense. Uh, that's important because as of late, Tallahassee's, uh, you know, two-headed monster they have in the backfield between Connolly and uh, Inola has been a bear for teams to have to withstand. Tallahassee's bringing in the number one passing offense. They have the number 16 running defense. So if, if, if Alaska is able to scheme some things up, you know, to get stand uh, to that second and third level, some good things can happen there. Tallahassee has the most turnovers in the league and also have the second. They're tied for second worst in turnover differential at minus eight. So there are some weaknesses in Tallahassee's armor there in their undefeated armor. Um, hopefully, um, in, in this, you know, coming up to this game, we were able to uh, look under every stone and, and, and find, you know, behind every nook and cranny to do what was necessary um, to find a way to outlast them because this, this game is going to come down to the wire, folks. It's not a game with any, it where either team is just going to line up, punch the blade in the mouth, and, you know, kind of to dominate the game. Um, you got two teams here who, uh, for the most part, looked, you know, uh, indomitable if that's a word that I could use uh, during this regular season. Ramos, what do you see about this matchup coming up uh, this Tuesday night on the front page of Twitch? You know, obviously we look at the star players. We look at Ron Cochran and Christensen and all those guys. We all know all of those names. But I think it's going to be very important for the non-star players, the players that they do not get called sometimes by name in these games, which is both offensive lines. Because you have to give Ron Cochran time to run to sorry to throw the football you ha you have to give Stan Nordellas a uh, crease sometimes to get you know that you know he's so good in between the five yard line in like to score in goal line situations he's so so good so if the offensive line of the Alaska Storm can just give Ron Cochran an extra second to throw the ball and find Justin Clifton in the middle of the of the defense who has no star linebackers the Tallahassee Pride defense does and if they can, again, give Stan Ordellas, probably he's not going to get like 100 yards this game, but if he can get his healthy 25, 30, 35 yards this game and get a first down, maybe a touchdown, that's going to be huge for Alaska. And the same thing goes with Tallahassee. You've got to stop Alex Dominguez. I mean, whether you put your tight end there or Connolly or Eniola, whoever needs to go there and block big numbers, is going to be very, very, very important for this Tallahassee Pride in order for Christian Christensen to do what he does best, which is drop back, get two, three seconds, and throw the ball deep to Duke Wilson or to Kenny G. Um, and as you were saying, my Jaden Eniola looked terrific in the game against the Houston Hyenas in the in the playoffs. He has improved so much this season from being a, you know a good back to being a back was like wow is you know you know he he looks like Ray Bentley out there so I, I think it's gonna be a game where yes we're gonna see the two big passing offenses like we've seen but uh, I I don't know I have the feeling that we might see uh, a curveball by any one of those two teams I don't know I don't know what it is probably Alaska sending a blitz probably Tallahassee trying to run the football with a fullback trying to generate something i don't know uh but i, I think it's gonna be a, a fantastic ball game this coming tuesday i i, I can't wait like i can't wait uh, as i told y'all in the and leading into the uh us being live like i i haven't slept this week just watching all the simulations go down and every game has been nip tuck certain on, on, on certain uh attempts um you know there were goal line stands that won the game on other attempts there were last second field goals and other ones. There were crazy pick sixes that won the game. It was just so I, I like this game Tuesday night. Man, if you love football and you love competition and you love big plays, there's no better place to be Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern with us on Twitch. 
I'm hosting a watch party. I'm going to have a bunch of storm members. I'm going to have a bunch of the, the non-star guys show up. We're just going to have a ball, chicken wings, you know. We're going to have some drinks. going to make it, you know what I'm saying? We're going to make it a watch party. So I advise y'all do the same. If you if you run a bar, throw it on the big screen. Half the folk in the bar won't even notice that it's, you know, it's 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 football. But it's what it's almost summertime. Football in summer? What is this? Exactly. Bamboozle them and get them enthralled. Front page of Twitch, two, of Twitch Tuesday night. I'm telling y'all, perfect night. Nothing else is on. No, nothing else is on. There's nothing to compete with us. We're gonna have all the eyeballs and attentions to ourselves. You know, having said all that, want to touch upon the. Uh, we just uh, elected a new batch of teams, so, so we have some expansion winners that we want to congratulate. Um, this week, we got the Baltimore Vultures. You know, um, led by uh, TJ back in the owner's fold in Baltimore. But they're not the crabs. They're the vultures. They're the birds of prey. So be careful over there. Uh, we got the New Orleans Pharaohs led by Aaron Arrington, who for the umpteenth time, he finally got over that hump, you know. And congrats and welcome to the owner's circle, Aaron. Um, we got the Las Vegas Fury led by John Bond, also known as Strong Safety Action Max Jackson. From the San Francisco Sharks. Um, he'll be leading that unit out of Vegas. And last but not least, the Denver Night Wings, who were formerly known as the San Antonio Vaqueros. See, almost I got it right. Even after they're gone, I guess. Mm -hmm. I uh, see, that are led by uh, Jeremy Vega, who used to be money hands in Vancouver. Now he's money in the owner's box. So we got these four squads jumping into this SFL madness that, that, that we love and enjoy. You know, more teams, more competition, more football. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, but with these new teams, we have to attribute them and put them in the right places. So there have been some, you know, uh, we had to shuffle some decks here and there. And the Central, the Central Division the Conference, the Central Conference, it, it doesn't exist anymore. It's up in smoke. We now have a South Conference. We'll get to them in a minute. In the East are the new Baltimore Vultures. We're going to have the Carolina, Carolina Skyhawks there, the Chicago Wildcats there. Yes, the Wildcats that used to be in the Central are now in the East. They didn't move, but the conference did. We have the London Knights over the pond. The Indianapolis Red Devils are joining the Wildcats and the rest of the guys in the East. And last but not least, the, 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 the reigning franchise that we try, we're all chasing behind is the Queen City Corsairs. Four rings and all. In the South. We have the Atlanta Swarm, my boy Chizzy, and, you know, BDG over there doing the big. The Dallas, the, the reconfigured Dallas Lobos, formerly the Dallas Roughnecks. Um, we got the Houston Hyenas, who are no longer out west as well. They're now in the central. The New, or the, the new, new Orleans Pharaohs, uh, the Oklahoma City Renegades, the Tallahassee Pride leave the east, then come to the south, and uh, are... And last but not least there as well is the Tulsa Desperados, uh, led by Deion Hawkins. And in the West, we have the Alaska Storm. We have the Denver Night Wings, uh, the new Denver Night Wings. We have the new Las Vegas Fury. We have the Mexico City Aztecs. Ramos, you're back home, baby. You should have never left. Um, we got the San Francisco Sharks. Um, we have the Sioux Falls Sparrows, and last but not least, we have the Vancouver Legion there as well. So with, there was some reshuffling of decks to make the teams fit in the regions that they belong. Ramos, what do you think about this reconfiguration of the SFL landscape? Uh, I, th I think it's just super interesting. You know, uh, we apologize. You know, in the West, the Vancouver Legion missing, and the East, the St. Louis Gladiators as well. Obviously, we have to mention them to teams that you know have been here for a few seasons now, and they are just. You know, Vancouver starting to get it together. Uh, St. Louis uh, looked improved uh, last season as well. But, you know, I, you know my, my thing is, who's going to be that team? Because there's always a team that comes right out of the bat, right off the bat and has a beast first season. A beast first season. We've seen the DC Dragons in season five. And last season it was the Tulsa Desperados. And we've seen the Houston Hyenas back in season uh, six. You know, we've always seen teams come here to the SFL and dominate. You know, TJ is a guy who's uh, not a new owner, has a new team. He's been here before. So look out for the Baltimore Vultures. 
I really like the Denver Nightwings as well. I think we have some brilliant new owners here. Las Vegas, uh, you know, Max Jackson did a great job last season with San Fran. We have New Orleans. Uh, the Pharaohs have Aaron Arrington as their owner, and Aaron Arrington has been a coach in a few previous teams. He has a lot of experience. So I think it's going to be very, very good to see which team of the new ones are going to come up and just make it to the playoffs and make some noise. I think it might be Baltimore because of the experience of TJ here in the SFL. He goes against teams that he knows uh, of. You know, he goes against the Queen City Corsairs again, and he goes against the Carolina Skyhawks again. So he knows this, uh, how this works here in the SFL. So I'm excited for it. And just looking forward for you know, just, just very good, football here because there's a lot of parity here in the SFL. You know, you don't have the team that goes every single season 0-12 like other leagues, you know, even professional leagues. So uh, just looking forward uh, for that. You know, obviously Dallas with a new identity, that's going to be interesting to watch. Um, so just looking forward for next season as well. Uh, yes, I, I missed the team in the East. I'm sorry, the St. Louis Gladiators, my man, my man, <laughs> my man Dwayne. Colin, my bad on that one. I missed out. I missed out when I was going down the list. I'd be remiss if I didn't say this to all expansion owners that did not win this season. That you know, all your hopefuls, don't despair. Get your nose to the grindstone. Get plugged in. Continue to do what you're doing. You will be noticed in the next the next batch, the next time around. Do reapply and bring the funk this time. And who knows? it'll be your time to get up there and join the owner's box. So, yeah. You know. Yeah. So, and sometimes, uh, you know, from my experience, sometimes it's a, it's a blessing in disguise, Mighty, because yeah, I didn't make it the first season. And the first season I had a crazy idea with the defense and the offense. I had a new, I had another identity, but you know, I, I took that one season that I did not make it as experience as me being a defensive coordinator with the crabs uh, and, and just learning more and more and more until I was ready to, take on a team so if you didn't make it this year it's not because you're you were not good we had and I, I, I'm, I'm telling you because I was there we had the closest voting for owners ever it, it was not it was so close we had to do a runoff and there were ties and and it was just it just so difficult to just have four new teams I mean uh, like 10 teams were worthy of NFL uh, sorry SFL franchises so do not be discouraged just Continue to push. Um, if you're not a coach, be a coach or a scout or media or the water boy. It doesn't matter. Get involved and then apply next season. Uh, you might have a very good shot. Okay. Um, we also just wrapped up uh, our own, uh, our own uh, the votes for the new rules that certain, certain owners have had uh, applied for and some passed and some did not. Um, I'm going to touch on a couple. Uh, Ramos, I remember I told you I was going to touch on one. I'm going to touch on a couple simply because one of them affects everybody and it's going to affect everybody soon because the championship game is two days away. Um, the one that says that your Discord name must match your player name. That is big and important. Please, let's make uh, DPP's life a lot easier and go ahead and change our names to match our players' names and not some like oogly moogly like it used to be. No, no more of that. Make your name, match your player name. It makes life a lot easier for us owners when we want to holler at you as a free agent or we want to draft you as a rookie instead of us having to hunt down and be like, who is this guy with a bunch of numbers in his name? No, we want to. So please make your name, your player's name is match your Discord name. That's first and foremost. Now, Ramos, which rule that was passed uh, do you like the most? I, I like several of them. Uh, I, I did put the... The voting up for, for one, which was having an offensive line as the long snapper, uh, I think that will improve special teams more uh, because, you know, kickers matter. So, you know, we, we will see, you know, uh, Cole Varner, Brad Bradshaw, you know, have very good shots to just go ahead and be what they are automatic instead of having bad snaps. But the one that I really, really like is uh, the coach points can be used on non-star players and that's huge non-contracted players that's huge because it can be so important in this chess match against teams like i was saying you know this um championship game i will be looking at the offensive lines at the non-contracted offensive lines 
So if you go against an Alex Dominguez, for example, you might want to spend a few coach points on your left tackle because you might need it. You know, if you go against a team who has a very good third wide receiver, a slot receiver, you might want to use a few coach points on your non-contracted nickelback. So uh, I, I like, I love that rule. I think that's going to be that. Just, I love rules that increase the level of creativity and the level of just game planning. And this is something that it does. Um, so I love that rule. Awesome. You know, yeah, me and you, man, we're kicking brothers. You already know that kicking brothers from another mother. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. The rule that I like the most that just passed is the fact that now players can't change positions without incurring a penalty. Yes, let me repeat that for those that, for the people in the back. Players can now move positions without incurring penalties. So that means, let's say you're a goal player at like a receiver and, you know, in season 11, you want to move to tight end. Well, guess what? You don't have to start back at base bronze. You could start at gold. You do, we just got to, adjust certain uh, attributes because they're not the same at tight end and receiver. So you can't bring that top notch speed that you had at receiver to tight end. We got to adjust it for the new position you're in. But for the most part, most of the attributes remain the same and you'll be able to keep your animations if they fit. That is humongous for you players out there that don't want to be pigeonholed. They want to be able to uh, play for a different coach or different owner who might need you to slide to a different position you won't have to restart your player from ground zero. So that's the rule right there to me that was, that was the most poignant um, uh, uh, that got passed this past week. So, um, Ramos, do you have anything else, anything else to add? Because I'm, I'm worded out. <laughs> I never thought I'd say that. I'm worded out right now. Uh, no, no, not really. I mean, there, there's a few rules that we can touch upon just a little bit. Uh, something that involves all the players and, you know, players be ready, players be, uh, you know, consistent and just, you know, responsible. You know, another rule was remove consecutive from the requirements for releasing inactive players for amount of missed weeks. So if you're a guy who's going to be away for a couple of weeks, let your owner know, let your coach know so they can plan accordingly. Hey, just like, hey, coach, give me just two weeks. I'll be right back. Just do not cut me basically uh and you know we can work around it i'm pretty sure so uh that's something that everybody needs to be ta- oh, well. you know paying yeah aware of paying attention of so you do not get caught like hey i was cut hey what's happening so please <laughs> yeah yes because we as owners we don't we no longer have it no longer has to be two consecutive weeks you know if you miss week three and week seven uh you're putting yourself in a very precarious situation and also your teammates you're you're robbing them by you not, you not doing your job as a member of the team to make sure that you uh, participate as much as you should. So there you go. Right. So, well, Ramos, this was nice. A little throwback, you know, ed- ed- edition <laughs> podcast for the folks. I know some folk were kind of looking forward to this. Um, but Tuesday night, again, I cannot repeat this enough. Tuesday night. For those coming over to the house, let me know, Ryan, if you're coming over so I can order enough food for you to eat, Ryan. Just saying. So Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, front page of Twitch. Tell your mama. Tell your daddy. Tell your kids. My kids going to watch it. Tell, tell the people in the back. Tell the people down the street. There's football. Championship level football on Tuesday night on front page of Twitch at 8 p.m. Eastern, where the storm are on the road in Florida, having to face off the undefeated Tallahassee Pride, where that magnificent championship, that one right there, that black one with the number 10, it says SFL, is on the line for the victor to take home and hold. Well, maybe not Tuesday night, but at the convention, that will be given to the victorious owner. I'm hoping I am that guy. So, with all that being said, for Ramos Lynn, owner of the Mexico City Aztecs, season nine champion, he got a ring. I am Max Paul. I'm trying to get a ring. The squad's on Tuesday night on Twitch. Owner of the Alaska Storm. That is it. That is us. See y'all in that chat room Tuesday night. Peace. Peace.